All right, in this video, we're going to do an introduction to plants. So you probably have an idea in your head of what a plant is. There's a ton of different types of plants, right? We have flowers, uh, maybe plants that we eat, like these are pea pods, right? So food, food producing plants. Uh, trees are plants. So we have all these different types of plants, and we want to start thinking about what are some things that these plants have in common. So what makes a plant a plant is a few different characteristics. First of all, plants have to make their own food. Uh, we as humans do not make our own food and that's why we have to eat is because we can't produce our own food. So plants do produce their own food, however, and if you want to pause the video and think about maybe how this, this happens, uh, but the process is called photosynthesis, right? So hopefully you've heard of photosynthesis before and we'll do way more with photosynthesis later in the plants unit, but Photosynthesis is basically the process by which the plants make their own food. So they take in sunlight and can, through a chemical reaction that's a little bit complex, make their own food and basically they make sugars and that's how they survive without actually eating. Uh, another characteristic of a plant is that it has a cuticle. So a cuticle is this waxy coating that uh, you might have noticed on the leaves of some plants. Uh, that basically uh, protects them and keeps them um, keeps their moisture in, and helps them if they're if it's dry out to, to kind of retain their their moisture. And plants also have a cell wall. All right, so there's a few differences here between a plant cell and an animal cell that we'll talk about in a minute. But plants all have a cell wall. So here are the differences between plant and animal cells. First of all, both plant and animal cells have a cell membrane, but the difference is in plant cells, that cell membrane is surrounded by a cell wall. So the cell wall just has a more rigid structure than the cell membrane, uh, and it kind of protects the plant cells a bit more than the cell membrane would. So it gives them a more uh, rigid and sturdy structure than the plant cells, or sorry, than the animal cells. Uh, a couple other differences with plant cells. First of all, they have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are these little green things in here that basically are what are in charge of the photosynthesis process. These are what absorb sunlight and sun energy and help drive the photosynthesis process. You'll notice animal cells do not have chloroplasts and that's the main reason that humans and other animals cannot do photosynthesis and make their own food. The other difference with plant cells here is that they have a large vacuole. So this, this big vacuole taking up a bunch of space, this is typical of a plant cell. Whereas in animal cells, we do have vacuoles. There might be a little small vacuole in here, but they're a, a lot smaller. So these vacuoles are for storage, right? And in the plant cells, they're just a really big vacuole in there compared to an animal cells. It's a very small vacuole. So we can classify plants based on certain characteristics. First of all, they can be vascular or non-vascular. And we're going to talk about what that means in a sec. And also, if we can look at these vascular plants, we can split them up into plants that have seeds and plants that have no seeds. And then if we split up the seed-bearing plants, we can have plants that have flowers and plants that have no flowers. All right. So these are some of the ways that we can classify plants. And if you think about this, we're just looking at some of their basic characteristics and trying to classify them into groups based on those different characteristics. So vascular and non-vascular plants, I just mentioned this. Vascular plants have this sort of plumbing. You can think of it like pipes or almost like veins in the human body that are used to transport water and some of them to transport food. So if you're curious, this is called the xylem and that's what transports water throughout the plants. So if we look at a leaf like this, you've probably seen a leaf like this that has these little kind of veins here. These are for transporting water throughout the plant, in this case, throughout the leaf. But even in a tree, in the trunk of the tree, there's going to be a lot of these little xylem tubes for transporting water. And if we think about, if we compare that to something like moss over here, that grows on like rocks or bricks or things like that, these do, <coughs> excuse me, these do not have uh, pipes for transporting water, and that's why uh, they are non-vascular plants because they don't have this sort of plumbing system to transport their water throughout the plant. 